We have uh, some some closely matched teams here going up against each other. And uh, whoever gets a win here will, of course, secure themselves a little bit closer to what we've been talking about before. The top of the group getting some nice, nice EPT points. Of course, sets yourself up for success as well further down the tournament. It sure does. Early smoke from both teams. Get out across to get some early wards down. Looks like Falcons did get a, a nice one on the opposing river. Two, two in fact. They got one up north and then one over towards the Dire Ancients. And I'm pretty and sure they saw that happen. He got the scout on the mid ward as well. Mikoto did drop the observer ward and that revealed to the Sanking that there's a ward on mid lane. And then Skitter having a little dance around the trees with Jokam down bot. And that Dire Sentry I guess is in the small camp to block it up for now. It's like Dire want to fight for a top uh, top bounty runes. Of course, there's an alchemist in the game, so every bounty rune you can secure is a big win. Looks like Lion is sneaking around, perhaps looking to steal, but he is under a ward. He just comes in to protect Amar. Akashi and Cuckoo, though, channeling the stun to steal the rune. Not quite going to work, but good attempt. Yeah, nice try. In the end, we're going to have a two for two on the runes. Actually, no, wait. Yeah, it is two for two. The observer word deny actually made it look weird. <laughs> uh, snaking, WS, Amar, and Cuckoo. Yeah, that was just the mid ward that Malreen scouted out, got removed. How does Pugna have a last hit? Did he not kill the ward? He killed a sentry. That's what he did. Oh, yeah. The lion killed the observer ward and Pugna killed a sentry. That's what's going on. Yeah, so he cleared up his own uh, camp, so Snaking has the pull ready. He also blocked up Joe Camp's pull on the big camp. There it is. So a good solid start for the Falcons. Luna Pugna against Muerta and Timbersaw. Ow, Pugna is just destroying this Muerta right now, doing a lot of damage from far away. Of course, trading against Pugna is so hard. He's one of the fastest heroes, and he also has 630 attack range, so he outranges most heroes quite well. Yeah, just running around with a fairy fire and a blood grenade. Happy as you like. Snaking having a good old time. Give Skit to that early laning stage he needs. And crit. Ever so barely going to miss out on that observer ward. It's not on the high ground spire. It's off to the right. Malreen have a bit of a tip battle with Makoto in the mid lane. 7 and 2 Sanking. 6 and nothing on the Pangolier. But Makoto is kind of ahead on resources right now. He's a little bit ahead, but Bottle arrives now for Sanking, so he can get his HP up again. He's probably not going to miss too many of these last as he has the Stinger ready. It's so fun to play Sanking now with that Stinger. Just step up, whack the creeps. Very he satisfying. He's become a really powerful hero when they added that. He changed up a lot. And up at top, Amar 8 and 1. Looks like having a little bit of a better time than his opposing off lane of the timber saw but now cuckoo's on top of crit i don't know a spike but returned fire with the fiery spirits and the blood grenade can cuckoo finish this off going up high ground and crit with a fairy fire and uh, does he have to turn in hex or he's just trying to get under the tower to regen up he looks like he's okay yeah he's gonna be fine gonna back out as well he is finally gonna pop a salve here under tower so get his resources back up nice play by cuckoo though forced out the lion running away Give some time for his alchemist to farm. Meanwhile, mid, we see a bit of shenanigans <laughs> going on. Quite a bit of shenanigans as Malreen is farming a me uh, medium camp over here. And Who instigated time, this? Yeah, I, I think... I think Saki started it. I don't know. Mikoto pulls the big creep wave, though, to deny over here. Funny stuff. Oh, Mikoto. Yeah, I'm gonna deny an entire wave. and then He's got to gather that next radiant wave coming into his tower, though. Yeah, a little bit awkward. He missed one last hit under a tower already, and then losing some last hits over to a tier 2 tower, claiming 3, actually, and misses another one. I <laughs> spread it out a little bit too much. It's but awkward. Yes, going away. And Malharine, meanwhile, is just farming camps in the jungle. Having a great old time. Very easy for him. Yeah, this is what Sanking does best, and quite efficient clearing here, getting a nice amount of farm for himself. It's going to be Boots and the Wand on its way out to the Sand King. 
Well, on the side lanes, we can say that the Timbersaw has not had the best of time so far, but still doing okay. He's uh, getting decent, decent last hits. Has the healing Lotus as well. Just every time he steps up to a creep wave, he loses 30, 40% of his health. Uh oh. Joe a Cam. blast and a lucent beam, and Joe Cam's feeling that pain as well. Blasted by the Pugna, but not quite finished off. 10 HP and heal salve back. But this lane is uncomfortable for Talon. Yeah, Snaking also swaps in. Salve wants to do the same thing. We might have a dead shot to cancel it. Misses though. Barely missed the angle. Still trying to get in there. Lands a hit on the Pugna at least. And yeah, Timbersaw, the only one who's really struggling here. Everyone else having pretty solid lanes. Of course, Malreen, the big winner, clearing out large camp, stacks, and the waves in the mid lane too. Yeah, so far doing really well. And that's what we expect. Sanking against the uh, Pango. He should be farming really well, but he can't really shut down the Pango. Pango is dishing out a lot of damage with the swashbuckle. We might even see Malreen run to base right now with his boots and bottle. Uh, he's going to stick around, body blocking next creep wave. And a big fat sanking tail. And how's that top lane then? Al Alchemist is alright up there, but Bristleback is farming, huh? Bristle is getting a lot of CS. Alchemist is not able to do that much damage to him. Lion though, can I get gone on again here? <clears throat> well, he turns and hexes the Alk, but he's dead to rights. Trying the twin gate. <laughs> Good attempt, but Akashi will secure that first blood for himself. That was not far off from Roshan coming in and smacking him to deny him, actually. A few seconds later and Rosh would have killed him instead. <laughs> and deny him from the Alk. Deny that first blood. Yeah. They got it though, so good start for the Alchemist here. Not doing uh, too poorly. It's concerning how farmed the Sanking is getting though. And being backed up by Crit as well. Ooh. Joe Cam's making Makoto a move across in. here, but Makoto's used the swashbuckle. Dead shot to try and hit Crit as Malreen will get bonked up to high ground as this rolling thunder well placed right onto the Sanking to kill him off. Talon with you know, Cuckoo and Joe Cam both arriving in the nick of time. Both teams with the same idea. Minute six, they want to play for the power runes. Looking for a kill on that mid, and it's going to be Talon who get the better trade here. Oh, Cuckoo had to pick up the regen rune, but it looks like that should net them a kill on crit. A nice push down by Jokam with the angle on that dead shot, pushing him into the river again. No running away. This does mean that the, the Timbersaw takes a bit of the pressure, though. Still in that lane 1v2 while the dire supports go roaming around. And Malreen has found his way down here, but that's spotted. That's pinged out. WS knows what's coming. Yeah, they saw him. He's checked. Trying to check here for some uh, stacks on the enemy ancient or big camps. Of course, Sankin can steal them very fast. I think he's sticking around for the wisdom as well. Yeah, 20 seconds to go for it. He's just gonna steal the next creep wave here. Luna is like, what? What happened to my farm? <laughs> I have him glyphing it up. Glyph the creep wave, glyph the tower. Oh, Jokam. Is t oh, the power strike misses, but Jokam's still down here. Low HP, he drops the calling. Skitter with Snake. King, unable to finish the job, but Malreen has managed to take the Wisdom Rune, while this Lunar and Pugna turning back on the Timbersaw, and Jokum so somehow kind of slipped through the gap there. Cuckoo's died elsewhere. Looks like Lion and Phoenix having a battle by the Radiant Tier 2 over on the other side of the map. Pangu goes in. Easy kill here on the Pugna. No way out of it. And you can see the, the circle <laughs> rolling onto him. <laughs> What's... Why? Okay, Snake, no, it's fine. Snaking died there. That's whatever. They use Rolling Thunder. I want to go back. Why was Cuckoo over there? <laughs> what, what was he doing by the tier two on the Radiant side he was, he was of the, the map? Wisdom, man. Trying, trying to make place. He was, he was under tower. He was very deep. Yeah, I think he got... Yeah, maybe he got caught with a dive when he was going for the Wisdom Rune. Uh, maybe Crit just had him midair. Yeah, I think you might be right. Oh, I don't know. And he died. Yeah, Crit's going to stack up some camps. Actually, what happened? We can see the stun and the tower hits there overlapping, so... Makoto now the DD rune. It could lead to some action. We'll see where he heads. Could also just be him clearing out the Ancients and the stacks. Which is what he's going to do right now. Yeah. 
Keep building towards that Diffu. Wants to get his timing. Once you have Diffu on Pango, you are incredibly strong. Meanwhile, Marine showing no respect. Just going in here and finding some nice juicy big camp to steal as well. I mean, it's Talon with the kill lead, but it's Falcons finding a lot of these openings, getting on top of heroes like Akashi's Alchemist. Amari Crit making the play onto him. Needs a, a bit more follow through though, because Akashi has the wand and Makoto's arrival, turning it back on the Bristol and getting their fifth kill of the game, while Cuckoo does finally get slain by Malreen. But Makoto has another Rolling Thunder. Go straight back in on top of the Sand King, trying to dance around, pirouetting hide. in circles. Skitter with the Eclipse coming back in onto the Alchemist. Akashi's too tanky though. Can't find the kill on him. And a lot of back and forth prodding here from both teams, but uh, yeah, the Bristleback dying there. Sad times for Falcons. It's a bit sad times for them, but at the same time, they're pressuring the tower, they're taking the tier one while defending the bottom tier one tower for now. So they are in a good spot still. Mar going on to WS here. Chasing along with Skitter. I don't know if they can get this kill. non-stop bouncing around and Skitter, like you say, he's fine to run away. While WS gets turned on and the big old mace of Bristleback swings down into the back of his head. <laughs> Just chased him for like 30 seconds. Menacing little Bristleback with a murderous intent. This is a bit different from how we've seen 33 play the Bristleback and some of the other uh, Bristlebacks that we've seen as well. Activating more, moving across the map joining up this bottom area while the supports keep stacking. Yeah, this would usually be the time that Bristleback is kind of farming a three stack of Ancients or clearing a large camp. But I guess the fact is tier one's already dead. Snaking goes and takes up that part of the map. Amar just comes down bottom. He's just protecting the Luna a little bit as well by being down here. If they go to gank the Luna, they have to go through the Bristleback. Not so easy to do. He is very, very tanky in this game. And crits hit level 6 off of that mid lane. So the ancient stack actually goes to Malreen instead. It was oh. scouted out by Dyer here. A little kobold. Snaking is going to get rolled on up top. Akashi and Makoto yet again. Pairing up together to find a kill on a support. Makoto, mega kill streak. Having a great time. 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Not bad to get 5 kills before you get Diffu. And now he has the defusal recipe as well. Believe. Does he have the... Uh, yeah, he has the like the already. Joker? <laughs> yeah, he's got the dead shot back, the bristle back, because he was getting close to death there, even with the calling dropped. It just adds up so quickly. You know, the right clicks come through pretty freaking fast. The quill sprays start stacking. A Falcon's back up to the top lane with a smoke out of sneaking and Malreen. You can't Super underestimate bad. Amar on the Bristle, just the pressure he can put, but now running into the mana burn of the Pango. Could be difficult for him. He pops a few mangles, though. He does not want to stop. I'm sprinting forward. Arian Slink breaks. Looking for the angle here. First blink reveal, but he walked past the ward. It's a level 6 Phoenix now as well. Cuckoo has that supernova. We've also got the ult. Oh, the ult and Muerta ready too as Malreen whiffs the stun. Dive on in from Cuckoo. Trying to follow up on Malreen's misplay here, but not wanting to get too bogged down in this fight, which oh yeah, would have been a numbers advantage for the Falcons. So good realization by Talon. Just to back up a little bit and now look for their moment. Realize there isn't one. And stay on their high ground. Yeah, that was a risky moment for uh, Malreen missing the stun. They were a little bit slow to jump him immediately after he made the mistake, but maybe he could have been punished. Either way, standoff is over and the tier 1 tower is still alive. Radiant not extending their tower lead so far. So what what, what causes this to happen? Because we, we've got to a point now where we're pro Dota, the, the, we're at the highest level we've ever been. You know, the, the skill level of these players is insane. Sanking, is, is, it, is it just a misclick from Malreen or is it like a good move from Talon to reposition their heroes? Listen, he, ju he just messed up, man. It was a pretty simple blink stun, but sometimes you make mistakes. This is a game number one between these boys here. And uh, he, he just needs to get get warm. Yeah, just, I feel like we see it more often than not on Sanking in particular. 
And I'm wondering if there's just something about the hero. <laughs> nah, it could be that people get used to the Bloodstone AOE on the stun, and then mm. they under uh, they overestimate their uh, AOE on it. Like, he didn't want to stun too deep there, but I think it's just a little misclick. There's probably not much more to read into it. That's fair enough. The Falcons, yeah. they'll go for another smoke again. Another move, this time through the gate. They want to look for this timber soil who's been farming away bottom. Yeah, WS has recovered tremendously. Almost the same net worth as the Luna now. Alchemist still up at the top, though. Closing in on 10k as Ooh. Akashi has been racing ahead with his Radiance. This gank is coinciding perfectly with the timing for the Wisdom, but they get scanned out. Talon knows coming. They see the timber, the epicenter bar strike straight in. The finger of death to try and finish off. WS is dead, but in comes Akashi with Makoto looking at the lion. Crit throws out the hex on the Alchemist now to try and back up with the rest of his team. Malareen being dealt with by Makoto as crit will fall, snaking, draining life off of an ancient creep, but a supernova is dealt with, and this will allow Skitter to get a good eclipse onto Akashi with Malareen rejoining. The Alchemist is dead! A double for Skitter, chasing on forward with another loosened beam, but that's got to be it now. What an amazing fight for Falcons in the end, though. That looked like it was going to backfire completely with the TP cancel onto the thanking. thought they were going to get caught there, and they didn't have Bristleback joining for any of this. Still, they dominate the fight. Almost amazed that they didn't have enough damage here to bring down more heroes. We saw the Alchemist and the Pango try and roll around and catch everybody. But with a good Hex and a rundown, they actually just repositioned so well. I think Alchemist got to hit three times yeah, he got he, stunned hexed decrept he hit lion twice and that was like it yeah he got kited a lot throughout that fight and he doesn't have his blink dagger yet so that's why it's difficult for him to connect onto these targets but that was a fight that you lost handedly while bristle was farming bristle now has a full aghanim scepter for himself so he has that timing online sand king is ready with a veil and a blink dagger Looks like Radiant are starting to get in position. Extend that yeah. lead. They're on that more at the top. Easy pickings for Crit and Amar. Akashi in the vicinity here. Blink on the courier coming to him. Let's we'll see if he can... To Roche. Yeah. Start it up. In. And Dire not really in a position to contest this. Cool down for a little bit on the egg. And Timber very far away. Smoke up now, but I don't think they have any clue even that Roche is being taken. Perhaps they're just looking for a straggler. And yeah, they're running mid. Looks like they're gonna try and prep for the tier one mid take. But even that might be too late. Like if this Roche is grabbed by Falcons, they can quickly reposition to come back and defend. Like they're scanning bottom tier one to make sure that Talon aren't down there. They'll show on the mid lane now, Talon. And Falcons, they can just spread their wings. Get out across the map and keep on farming. Yeah. Skeeter is going to shove out bottom, working towards his Manta style. Only a thousand gold for him to go until he has Manta on the Luna. And at the same time, they're keeping posture up here on top lane. Looking at that tier 2 like they could maybe take it down. Mikoto still has his mega kill streak, still feeling strong, but the rest of his team, we haven't seen WS connect at all to any of these fights really. Yeah, and as far as Akashi is, the Bristol and the Sand King closing in on him is always a scary prospect. And the surprise factor that Falcons have at any given moment with these multiple blink stun, like immediate blink stun or blink hex initiations. If Talon show, you know, as a straggler on a lane somewhere, you, you, can't, you basically you can't be alone. You can't be alone under vision, so good D ward from Jokam. You can't be alone on a lane, you have to hold hands and play together. And that's what they're gonna try. They're gonna roll, blink the stun on the lion. In comes the Sun Rain to burn down Crit, and Lion is dead. Falcons now, what's your option? Is it just run away? Can we turn and fight here with Malreen channeling Epicenter? They're thinking about it. They want a better position though, and they're kind of lacking vision. They'll start with a Burrow Strike from Malreen onto the Phoenix, but I don't think this is exactly what they wanted or intended, because now the so Supernova on top of the Sand King, forcing Malreen and Amar back, and that concoction landing opens it up for WS, but the Malreen on the Beasting of Health survives, and Skidder moves in with another massive eclipse for another huge double kill. They've baited them in, kited them around, dragged them into the danger zone, and three more will be slain here as Falcons, they open up on the Muerta. Amar with a wand, he's gonna die under tower, but he's got the Aegis to come back alive, and a triple kill for Skitter finally emerges. 
and tower gonna go down as well. What a nice patience there from Team Falcons. The way they waited for the right moment. Both Luna and Bristleback coordinated their abilities. The Luna Eclipse and the Aghanim Scepter usage from Amar. Oh, we see more of a pick off here as Lion gonna lose his life. But yeah, the way they coordinated their abilities made for some quick work of the talent team. Makoto keeps his streak at least. Akashi. Mm. Has Makoto and Jokum nearby? And then Skitter shows on our left hand side though. Probably not where you want to be fighting with no chemical rage for 30 seconds. Alchemist still just wants to farm. He doesn't necessarily want too many of these engagements, where Skeeter's been very happy to join the fights as Luna. 5 0 and 2 getting a lot of kills. Not being chased though, Pango roll. Don't know if he can get away from this one. Ah, oh, he can't dance around Makoto. He's here with a Chakra from WS and a Rod of Atos. Down goes the Luna, streak picked up. 600 gold for the Timber Store. And that was dead for 40. He needed some momentum. It's been a pretty quiet game otherwise. Some big items being found here. We have neutral items. The uh, Vampire Fangs along with the Voodoo Mask on the Bristleback means he can start doing those crazy HP recoveries in the fights. This has the shard for himself already. Jeez. Dear God, the damage. I didn't think he was going to die, but it's just like that damage is... <laughs> yeah, it definitely stung quite a bit. Mikoto going to use his magic stick and try and control runes to get some HP back. 20 minutes is coming up. Tormentors on the board. Power rune. Can go the way of Malrin. It's one of these kind of funny games where both teams reasonably happy to, you know, go to mid to late game. Both teams very happy to brawl and fight right here, right now. Like making, they've got so many decisions. Do you, like, are they going to find themselves with like choice paralysis? Like, do we have to go for Roche? Do we have to go and fight now? Yeah, it, just play around I mean, their own item timings. It's a good spot to be in in Dota when you have so many different avenues you could go down. It keeps you unpredictable. And right now, it's going to be Falcons smoking over to try and contest the Tormentor take here that Talon are setting up. Looks like they're going to be a little bit late, perhaps. Not quite there in time. Crit sneaking over. Maybe he's <laughs> he gets dead shotted. Jokem sends him all the way back. They're going to forfeit the Wisdom Rune, though. Doesn't look like they have any intention of fighting for that, of losing their HP to a Tormentor, even using the Murta ulti. Against it. Falcon's still here. The smoke expires. Falcons want to take a tower. Feeling pretty strong. They don't have any form of uh, lead like ages or whatever, but maybe they don't need it. Pugna just poking from a distance. Yeah, they've, they've got their own Tormentor and Wisdom Rune to go and get, but it looks like. Amar for now trying to steal out Ancients, but getting caught with a supernova stun landing on, on his head from that concoction out of Akashi and snaking now being munched on by the Alchemist. A double kill for him this time with a third one picked up by WS. Yeah, that was great timing to go on him when he was trying to be a Wait. little bit greedy. Sanking? Another concoction. Malreen trying to slip away from them. Joe Camp's coming in from the north and the rest of Talon on their way, but Malreen's too fast. Hey, he's gonna get himself to safety, keep farming jungle, not even panicking that much. But here we can see he just used his stuff to try and steal the Ancients. And then the jump comes in with the Spirit Vessel as well to negate the healing of this Bristol. I feel like he's not, he's gonna need that BKB or Lotus Orb or something against this. The jump and kill from both teams is... it is terrifying. <laughs> yeah, both no teams matter, you're a Bristol back, you get jumped, stunned and die. And it's not what you expect. Bristleback, normally so tanky hero, but uh, with the Spear Vessel reducing his healing, takes away a lot of that survivability. We have a Bristol taking Tormentor. This time I don't have to cringe watching it. <laughs> no mistakes. <laughs> he actually no did get help from snaking as well, so they're not leaving anything up to chance. Maureen? Makoto gets out of there. I like that from Makoto as well. Looks like he's queued up the Nullifier. Not immediately. 
Probably gonna go for the blink first, but against the pug now. We but was it was it boxy with the, the ghost scepter decrep bullshit? Uh yeah, it was boxy, right? Yeah, I think it was. Um who's buying a ghost scepter on the pugna and then keeping himself alive over and over throughout the fights. And even in this game, we see a glimmer cape on Pugna. That's a great hero to throw a nullifier on. Or whoever he's trying to save. And of course, there's the Solar Crest as well. Not to forget, Solar Crest can also be dispelled. And uh, it's very useful to get rid of it. That's a lot to get rid of. And Falcon's the one stepping towards the Dire Base. Kind of forcing the Hand of Talon to make a play. Looks like they're going to shove out one more mid-wave and then come back to that top jungle. Reclaim a bit of the territory, get some D wards. Yeah, make it a little bit more dangerous for Falcons to stay around up there. Yeah, Falcons going to TP out immediately, sanking goes towards mid. He did show himself mid though, so immediately Talon know that this area is now pretty clear. Just a little Pugna hiding in a tree line. And what's the Roche timer? Just under a minute. Pretty much exactly coinciding with the day to night shift. Crit gonna walk back away from Talon's invasion. And who's that TPing out? Well, whoever it was, Pug safe Pugna and sound. Out. He's, he's staying, he stayed safe for a while, but gets out in time that uh, Joe Cam doesn't catch him with a dead shot. This top area is important to control as well, as it's gonna switch to nighttime and we have. Roche moving towards top on the respawn. Both teams are very happy to just farm right now. Yeah. See all six cores basically just accelerating their own game. Alchemist probably the big winner in that. Passive game always feels good. Get your key items. He has uh, Assault Crash very soon. 250 gold to go. It's another one of these games where I look at the clock and it's 25 minutes in, but it feels like we're reaching minute 40. The ebb and flow of this game has very much been, you know, one big action-packed fight and then go back to being very delicate, push out the map, play that Cuckoo. big open wide space. Cuckoo is also going for the null fire, by the way, on Phoenix. He's pretty close oh. to his 1800 gold, or actually 1400 gold, sorry. Uh, and he will have it. Still use that old relic cost. It's so cheap nowadays. It is quite cheap, yeah. And there we go, Falcon. See the Roche in the pit. Get some wards down. Dire Observers kind of on the extremities of this top left corner. And they're trying to scan around, around as well. They got scanned out though. Both scans turn red. Malarine trying to scout them with a the Shiva's Guard and a step forward with the blink back. Very quick to get away from a potential Alchemist stun, which did get channeled. That's a great use of Shiva's. It scouts into the tree line, so he revealed the enemy smoke. Quickly blinks to safety. Still, though, it's anyone's game, this initiation. Sending in some Luna Illusion. Good way to get vision. The opposing push on the creep waves, but Akashi has been forced to use Chemical Rage quite early on there. A little bit afraid of Falcon's move to wrap around on him. Yeah, they want to fight right now before Chemical starts wearing off. Oh, the Alchemist. get the angle, though, as Falcon are backing out. They're backing in on the vision. Oh, this is dangerous now. Makoto has the Rolling Thunder, and it's a good connection, allowing Akashi to get on the back line, snaking. He's close to death, but it's Cuckoo and Jokam, the first ones to fall. Now Crit will die as Akashi is enabled to open up, but Falcons, it feels like they've got control of this one, with the buyback out of snaking and the move on forward, but Makoto's cracked them wide open with a kill on Malreen. They turn onto WS, Supernova Sun Ray trying to come down to heal him up, but that's not enough. Skitter standing and fighting into the egg, and they take it down, but Skitter's gonna lose his life for it. Amar. The one left standing, snaking board back to come in and protect him, but he's been pushed around by the dead shot. Shoved back in towards Makoto. Buyback from the Sanking now as well. Life drain onto the Bristleback to keep him topped up, and a Burrow Strike just barely missing. Makoto going for the TP home now. Epicenter is going to get stopped, and it looks like Makoto's out Akashi there. But look at Akashi Ooh. blinking off to the right. Gets himself a bit of space. Amar's on his tail, but a great dead shot again from Joe Cam. Sends back the Bristleback. Malreen in again. Epicenter Burrow Strike to kill off the Muerta, and Akashi once more isolated and stranded. Can they take down this alchemist with three surrounding him? Surely there's no chance for Akashi oh, to no run and hide. He's in the trees, but he's going to die. 
Man, these fights are so crazy. Buybacks coming in from both teams immediately in there. And Team Falcons, on the back of this Bristleback, just managed to outlast them a little bit more. It started out beautiful for them as well. The blink stun from the start of the Sand King here. We see it in the replay. Uh, set up for the chain stun coming in as well from Lion. He lost his life, but he provided a valuable two-hero stun. I underestimated how much Makoto was going to do in that fight as well. It's like here, I'm thinking... This is going to start looking pretty good for Falcons, but it was their Sand King. The Lion's gone. Snaking's trying to get back into this fight as well to save them. But Skitta just gets focused down so, so, like, heavily by Akashi and Makoto. Yeah, Akashi was on him for quite a while, landing those auto attacks, and it adds up after a while. You lose both your, your damage and your movement speed. The corrosive weaponry thing is kind of odd. You don't think about it too often when you play against Alchemist, because a lot of time he bursts people. But, uh... Adding up as he keeps attacking like that. Luna lost all her mobility and damage. Back in the game, we uh, did have Roche being taken on the back of it by Team Falcons. They got themselves the Aegis on Bristleback. So Falcons won the fight in the end because they got <laughs> they got Aegis? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they definitely did one, win the fight. It was just very messy. It was hard to tell who was going to win for a while. It was expensive. Oh. It was like, I was just thinking the buybacks, right? Malorine had to buy back. So did Snaking. And Makoto. I mean, five were used on both teams though, so it was a it was a fine cost. Nice pick off here by uh, Talon taking down the Sand King, who, as you mentioned, used his buyback before. Not gonna lie, I thought we were still in a replay for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was in the same area. It went same very seamlessly area, from same uh, heroes. Yeah, seamless transition right there. WS getting stunned up in the mid lane. That damage comes through pretty freaking quickly. Just chain disabled into death. Now Jokam's being run at. And Falcons, ah, team fight victory, an expensive one, but getting Aegis and now even more momentum. Bristle holding that Aegis. They can start running down these tier twos. He is looking so threatening right now. Aghanim Scepter, BKB, Bloodstone, Aegis in hand. Amar is ready to smack now with the DD rune as well. This tower is not long for this world. Not a single buyback available in the game, by the way, right now. Everybody is either used their buyback or doesn't have gold for it. So that's a good 20 seconds with no Muerta, no Timbersaw. And Bristleback seems like he knows this is time to shine, but has he gone too deep here? And he just claimed up by a Supernova and the Chemical Rage used by Talon. And Amara is still ready to gun straight towards them, fight into the Phoenix. Force another dive back to the Tormentor. Yeah, he's just calling. That's fine. Aegis used, but they used two ultis for it. The Pangle roll and the Phoenix ulti means they can't really teamfight right now on Team Talon. If Falcon want, they could go and push bottom. We see Pink's coming out already from Malreen. Needs to get this creep wave going. Yeah, nice big wave. They take control of the Ancients. Take the outpost. There's even Ping's on that tier three in the mid lane. Plate mill as well now on this bristleback, getting even thicker. Amar getting dived on. It was very irritating there, getting dead shotted back into the calling. Spirit vessel and fiery spirits on him. The Falcons reposition for the tier two bottom. Quick top up uh, from the support as well, snaking with the heels here coming in. Also, it's a Pugna with Ether Lens and Psychic Headband, so he's got really long cast range on this Glimmer Cape, on his saves. Nullfire is ready, of course, on the Pango, though. Didn't have that in the big fight earlier. Now they do. And Talon feeling a little bit lost in terms of what to do right now, having spent those ultis and knowing the Falcons are so strong at this point in time. But it's still... 18 to 18, no net worth lead really to speak of. Yeah, it's literally dead even. We just saw it swap from Talon to Falcon being ahead here, so they are neck and neck here, net worth wise. I do think as the game progresses, you're happy as Team Falcon here. Even or uh, even being ahead a little bit against an Alchemist is a very good spot to be in. Alchemist doesn't get that much value for his net worth, whereas Luna almost has the same net worth as him. And Luna is the better body to have that gold on. Ah, 
there's just really not much of a difference between them. I mean, Al Alchemist is not fully slotted, but this is kind of his critical mass, right? 30, 35 minutes in. Yeah, he is hitting his timing, or, you know, this is when he's supposed to shine. You can still get a little bit stronger. You can get the Swift Blink, and the Bloodthorn is usually the final items, but uh, I think he wants to make stuff happen right now. That's where we see him joining up his team. Do they have a smoke? They don't, actually. They've got a Tango on the floor. Yeah, yeah well, that that won't hide you. Are you going to use it as a leaf? Hold it up. No, yeah, here or here. Tarzan style. Is your loincloth. <laughs> hide next to a tree. <clears throat> it's camouflage. Yeah. Maybe that's something you can do if you have like 10 tangles. You can uh, you can use it Gilly as suit. a semi-envies. Yeah. You get snipers facet. Yeah. <laughs> Marine again, just face tanking, checking up high ground with Shiva's guard. Yeah. I know. Same move. Same move as he did over at the Roche pit. Just aggressively scouting with the Shivas. Everyone knows there's vision up there now. So Falcons shifting back up to that top jungle rather than playing into enemy ancients. Yeah. They wanted to deward it, but they don't really have to. They can just accept that there's vision there and back out. Yeah, push out the top wave. Kind of force the hand of Talon to come back and defend. Maintain lanes. And Talon are falling behind here. They're not spreading out as much. They're not covering as much area. And they are the ones who are on the timer to do something in this game. Otherwise, Falcons are just building to scale a lot. We've seen how strong Bristlebacks can become when they're gear slotted. Luna, definitely a stronger carry than the Alchemist. And then you have the Sanking versus Pango matchup where, sure, both are pretty strong late game, but... And I, I think the worrying part is you're not mentioning Timbersaw. And it, that, that's felt like the crux of the game here is that WS hasn't popped off. No, he, he has decent farm, but, <clears throat> you know, decent is not going to cut it. Everyone else is still ahead of you. Uh, so he... He had a very slow early game. Stifle this growth. This smoke around here could find some kill, but Crit is protecting his Luna. Tanking the smoke even. Yeah, maybe some argument from Muerta to start scaling, but the Pango is the one getting jumped on, getting blown up, nearly finished the off. Cut, get and Maureen get the kill on the Pango. Now Akashi even through the BKB being just pummeled down by magic damage. Galore, while well, Skitter, he's delayed BKB, he allows him protection against WS now. The buyback out of the Pango, rolling in towards the Luna. Glimmer caped up, BKB expiring, Skitter still the focal point now, with a concoction thrown and the Chakrams in onto this Luna, but the life drain's coming. Can they life drain those? Not enough regen to heal the Luna, but Amar and Maureen, they're still going. Right on top of the WS Timber. Down he goes, Makoto the next target, with Amar still having his the BKB. Bristleback. The shiny golden Bristleback God whacking into his opponents. One by one, they'll crumble before him. Jump down Akashi. So close to getting a stun there onto the Alchemist from Malreen, but they'll have to shift focus onto Joko's Muerta instead. Burrows to low ground, but doesn't quite land it. But they've got the damage to take her down nonetheless. 90 seconds of no pango now, and they're right on the doorstep as well. They're gonna crack into this high ground. Luna respawning in 50 seconds. Bristleback is ready to do the damage as well. Look at him just going towards top. It's like, oh man, we dealt with a Luna. Thank God the carry is dead. And then Amar just comes busting through the trees, breaks down the wall like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> like, yeah, he really just broke in there. And they already expended all their resources trying to kill Skeeter and didn't have anything left in the tank for putting up with this bristle. And we can see a difference. That's your carry compared to this, this bristle back. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's all Amar is doing right now. Oh yeah. Break That's down the wall. Yeah. Kool-Aid Man and Bristleback would be great pals, I think. <laughs> Kicks a barracks, hits it with his mace. Oh, yeah! <laughs> over and over again. I'm going to stop now because I'm sure that's irritating people. There's a lane for Falcons. Let's come in and claim what they want. As Talon still with no pango for 30 seconds. And Amar is he's still playing with them. He knows he can't really die against them. BKB is coming off cooldown. He's keeping them well in their base here giving a lot of space for Luna and the Sand King. Sand King working on level 25 and Luna running over on the Ancients. And a blink for Lion. Almost 40 minutes in. We're yeah. seeing more and more of these delayed blinks with well, last last series we had Drums, Tranquils, Ether Lens. Now Soul Crest, Force Staff into blink. Some good saving items. He has to be careful. He was under a ward for a while here. Alchemist is looking for a chance to jump him. 
Of course, here comes Amar, though. Amar, the finder, and Malreen helping him out to blow up Cuckoo. This is a bit of a disaster now for Talon. He'll have to buy back the Phoenix. Akashi with an early BKB, but not able to stand and fight. Makoto, different ideas to go deep into the back lines, while WS is trying to contend with Skitter. Again, the fight separating three different ways, but Falcon's the ones that keep themselves all alive, and Crit is back in. Another round of initiation straight onto the Pangolier to kill off Makoto, and the Supernova Sunray is being avoided. Falcon skirts around the edges of the fight yet again. So Cuckoo's ulti kind of wasted while yeah, Joker's Murta is going back in onto the lion but can't even finish off crit. Akashi with an optimistic TP coming out here, but he successfully gets back to Fountain. The trouble is the rest of his teammates in disarray. Yeah. Team Falcon just doing such a good job in these chaotic fights to recenter, refocus, and say, yo, guys, Pangle, we can bring him down after a roll. They coordinate it, and all three cores at the same time take down the Pangle there after the, the roll finished. It started out nicely for them as well due to that lane war that they had themselves. They saw the Alchemist and then just jumped the back line. And here is when the fight was really chaotic. It's like, well, what's going on? Who's, who's even dying at this point? Who's chasing who? But Pangle overextending with the roll right now is when you can see Team Falcons coordinate this jump. And then it cuts and we are back into the game where Skeeter has his um, himself an Aegis. That's the reward for winning that previous fight. Oh yeah, and we have uh, Luna with the full Aghanims as well being consumed from the Roche. Got that strong eclipse coming in. And the ion cannon. And Jokam, what is that? Rod of Atos, Shadow Blade. And trying to add a bit of catch and maneuverability. And looking to scale with the Silver Edge to break the bristle back. Bit of a, a bit of a pipe dream though at this point. Yeah, it's, it, it's tough. This Murta is not really hitting that uh, like right click carry style gameplay. He's, Feeling pretty underwhelming at this stage. Surprised to see he didn't go for a four staff in this game as well against all these uh, jumps from Lion and Sand King. The chain stun has been brutal. And now they're held back in their base. Falcons have gone from being birds of prey to being sheepdogs, herding the fluffy little taloned sheep back into their pen. Game was even for quite a while, but now we're looking at 25,000 gold lead here for Team Falcons. That was absolutely huge, and also the levels. They have that level 25 on the Sand King with Timeless Relic. That ulti does a tremendous amount of damage now. Look at them. Look at them smoke in through that top lane. They found the catch on the Pangolier, and Makoto, he's out of here. Dead for 90 seconds. And Falcons, they found their moment just to run through that mid lane. They forced a glyph, but that's only going to delay the inevitable demise of their mid lane of tier three in barracks. Oh, that's just so surgical. They take out the most important hero, the hero without buyback. They know he doesn't have buyback. Pango is out, and how can his team put up a fight against all this? The glaives are bouncing, Waga. I don't even know if they can kill Amara, like 4v1 right now. Can they? He's I... going in, he's asking the same question. <laughs> Oh, he's running up there and saying, well, in the script it says, I'm allowed to dive your fountain. <laughs> if you've got anything to go against this, speak to the writers, because this Timbersaw is being absolutely shredded. Dead with buyback. He's going to have to use it now. They've lost their Phoenix. He's gone for 90. Jokam kind of stuck on the right-hand side of this bottom lane. Invis in the Shadow Blade. But Falcons are coming to claim the buildings. Akashi, oh, he had a BKB to stop himself from self-stunning. And now in comes Amara yet again. The BKB out of WS stops any kind of hex from crit. But Jokam on the right-hand side has been burrowed up and killed by Skitter. And in that fountain, Amar turns his back. The Quill Spray damage countered by the Ghost Scepter, but GG's called. Talon, no, they've got no more chances. Yeah, they're completely out and there's no way to turn this one around as Team Falcon just took a few too many good team fights on game because they have all the birds. Yeah, that's what you need in this. Ah, they're missing an important one though. Kunker doesn't have his parrot. Uh, could have got an extra point for that one. Unfortunate. But there we go. The Falcons already having one game one. Sitting pretty in this best of two. With this kind of draft, uh, again, a lot of brawling 
capabilities from both sides. And we're going to see that straight off the bat here with Snaking getting gone on. Flame Break into the damage from the Blood Grenade and the right clicks gives WS the first blood. Uh, usually, you know, the mid lane hero, the one that you'd want to give first blood to, the scariest one usually to rush that bottle. But Visage in this off lane is going to be very spooky. Yeah, he's also happy because he took the first blood with the W. He stole Assumption that and he has the death toll facet. So he's getting that track money already. Basically role playing as a bounty hunter. Money, money, money. Uh, this hero makes a lot of gold if he gets a few kills. So starting out, he sends out a Null Talisman and a Tango already as a result of that kill. Where's he? Oh, is he going through Twin Gate? Yeah, he's heading bottom. He's like slowly swooping his ass down there. Surprised he didn't go top immediately. Yeah, maybe a little bit worried that maybe Falcons were setting up in the Radiant Ancients. Definitely going the safest route. Wait. No, where's he going now? He's, he's Oh, he's looking for a first blood set up here. You serious? Sneaky play, yeah. He's actually sticking around. He wants <gasps> to try with the clockwork and the SF. That's They're saying cool. that they can catch someone level one and go for a kill before he TP's top. So he lets Batrider just be the offlaner for a little bit while he sets up the kill here. Usually it's the support that does this, but this is, yeah. this is different. This is the offlaner looking for a kill. That's why I was very confused. because The last time I've seen anything like this was like a treant, you know, going into a lane, hiding in the trees and going for first blood. But it's going to be Cuckoo to start off with the cogs. Akashi with the raises. WS trying to catch up to this Doom and throw a solo assumption at him. No kill, but you've definitely put a bit of pressure onto Amar. And now the TP top. Oh, that shot a little bit late. Also a little bit off the mark. Crit not going to get to cancel on that one. Does mean that top the Dragonite had a very nice start here. Just allowed to free, free uh, control the lane. Getting himself three denies already. As for the other lanes, Mikoto off to a good start in mid. Eight and three already. Oh, wow. Yeah, having a tremendous time. Now the Visage has returned top though. Skitter feeling a, a lot of pain here from these soul assumptions. The Snake King's gonna have his work cut out for him just to play forward and keep them back. Now Visage, very good hero kind of against this Pugna who loves trading, loves just chipping and damaging. The soul assumption returns fire very nicely. Very, uh, very intense battle in the mid lane with the uh, Kunkka just dealing this damage over to overall. I think this might be a good reaction pick to seeing the Earth Spirit. I've seen a lot of heroes struggle against the Earth Spirit, but maybe Kunkka can deal enough damage with a Tidebringer spam. So he's outlast hitting and out denying. And I guess then he's also got that potential maneuverability to get around the Earth Spirit or just to catch the Earth Spirit when he's rolling around and being annoying. Having the X mark gives you some uh, some great A quality catch. I can't wait to see him X himself before the Earth Spirit kicks him under tower and then just <laughs> X back. <laughs> Do some fancy saves. Bottom, a little bit Unlikely, lobby but... by Akashi, loses his courier here to uh, crit. Oh dear. Jokam stepping forward. Pugna Ward, quite annoying. But they'll kill it off as quickly as possible before dumping some spells into Skitter. Already Talon doing pretty well across the board and looking for a kill up top as Another well new. with that final bit of damage. They'll take Skitter down and Snaking probably going to follow him here. The soul assumptions just keep on coming and the body blocks from Joker are good enough to get both of them. That is a lot of damage. Even with the nice little trick used by uh, Skeeter there to try and stay alive, he dropped his bracer, used his magic stick, picked up the bracer again and kept running. All in a very seamless move, but it was not enough. The damage from this bird, Visage, nuke so hard in laning stage. Yeah, tough lane for Falcons up there. And again, a 3-0 start for Talon. Slight 1k lead. And I go for more. Yeah, welcome back to the lane. Look at the damage. Raindrops for what? Still gonna die? Dead to WS's visage. I mean, night and day difference between that Timbersaw and his visage now, as Jokam's also going to breeze away with his life out of the grass. Yeah, he has snaking. to walk with shame all the way back to top lane. He doesn't have boots yet. Level two Dragon Knight getting forced out of lane this hard. This is like unheard of. You normally don't expect a Dragon Knight to get bullied in lane at all. Uh, yeah, double range hero with his freaking visage, man. 
That's some nutty stuff. And Kunk is continuing his domination in that mid lane. And going to poke away at Malrain a little bit there, but this Skitter Dragon Knight. Yeah, Raindrop Stick doesn't help a little bit. Yeah, as he's slowly crawling back to the lane right now, getting towards that tier 1 tower. But he's level 2, almost level 4. Visage already about to hit level 4. Or just soon. Sorry, almost level 3 on right now. Oh, lane, blocker. Fairy fire. Can he tango through the trees? Make a break for it? He's going to get scouted here. And the cogs traps him inside the cage with that water. Amar also baiting a bit here, has 18 magic stick charges on the Doom. Wants to try and get Akashi to walk too far forward. When you're having as good a time as this Kunker, and maybe Earth Spirit feeling that he's a little bit behind, who who makes the first move? Because it feels like both of them kind of want to play to side lanes. But if they're doing well, you want to stay in the lane. Uh, Mikoto is more likely to stay in lane and just TP react. Uh, normally, it's going to be Mikoto staying in lane, Maori will look for a rotation, and then Kunka will be happy to TP and react to it, as long as it's close enough to a tower. But yeah, the longer this lane goes on mid lane like this, the Earth Spirit is falling a bit behind. 35 CS Kunka is really dominating. You start getting that itch. You've got, you've got to move. You've got to make something happen. And snaking. <laughs> is he okay up here? All, all, all he did was come and plant a little nether ward down. He nearly died for it. Yeah, it adds up so fast. The bat rider and the visage damage stacking up with the soul assumption. Jokam still hunting for him as well. Misses out on the courier snipe, but keeps Falcons on their toes. The wave is in front of the Radiant Tier 1 as well. So easy farm for WS and a long lane to chase the Skitter Dragon Knight now. Uh oh. DK steps up into a realm that does not belong to him. You are not a knight of this land. Visage and the Batrider will slay you once more. He cannot do anything up here. They need to solve this somehow. And now they're getting. Oh, he's being dived and snaking. He left the Dragon Knight alone up top, kills the Shadow Fiend down bottom. And this rotation from Makoto's Kunker, not going to accomplish a whole lot, but he does run away safely. He got himself silenced by Crit's W there. Didn't really manage to land a combo and didn't get the both out at all. Could maybe have found a kill on the Doom, but it would be pretty difficult. This gives a little bit of space for the Earth Spirit as well to finish up his level 6 on mid. So might see him join the sidelines as Skeeter again back on top lane just taking damage. Well, the Earth Spirit comes across. Dire Vision's going to scout them. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, Makoto stuck around. Help Cuckoo kill off Snaking. While top the dive, once again in under this tier one. There's just the no Earth ambulance on the way. Did the Earth Spirit just run? He, he just left him. He, he, yeah, didn't see an opportunity, so they'll take the kill on Dragonite again. Dead shot, not going to land the calling. It's there onto Joe Cam. Bat Rider can't quite deny himself the neutrals. Falls to crit. Yeah, Earth Spirit tried to TP, but he got cancelled, I believe, by uh, the Kunka X mark on mid. Ah, right. He does grab Ambition. the Wisdom Rune, though. Hey, gets that. Nice little steal. Might make his way top as we see this ward is revealing Visage. Not level 6 yet. A huge kill here for Earth Spirit if he can get it. This is massive. I mean, Radiant is scanning. WS doesn't have a TP. Oh, is Malrin gonna, is he going to find him though? The trees offering safe cover. The Visage trying to hide oh, away. He's in vision again. The shadows, but they see him now. Good roll from Malrin. Dead shot and the final touch. Take the streak. This gives some well-needed breathing room for Skeeter to maybe push a creep wave, go jungle. Pagna just being a nuisance mid, throwing down that ward. He gets the rune, but did not go bottle. Double bracer and magic stick instead. No refill for him. Another roll from Malarine trying to find the bat. They can't quite latch onto him. I'm just thinking about Shadowfiend dying, returning to this lane, still you know, having a pretty good time compared to the Dragon Knight, whose 2,500 net worth is barely above the Muerta right now. Yeah, Skeeter for sure needs a lot of time to recover. Uh, SF still doing quite well. Despite the one death, he's closing in on Mask of Madness. That's all he needs. That's his timing. He needs 400 more golds to complete it. Then he can start either fighting or farming faster.
He's farming on the reward now, though, and the smoke gang is coming from behind. It is. Maureen is here. He sees the Shadow Fiend right on top of him. Stop the Requiem with a stun, the silence, and the kill. Akashi down yet again. A lot of noise down in this bottom lane to try and make Skitter's life a little easier in that top part of the map. But Joker and Cuckoo may be wanting to make a meal out of this. Going for the X mark and the Firefly over the top oh, no, of the crit, and the roll in from the Earth Spirit straight into the combo of the Kunker. Malreen just died to a double kill of Jokam. Handed I, it to him. I think he tried to stop the Kunker from getting his combo off there, but instead he just became an extra to the meal that was already served. So a little bit of uh, Earth Spirit on the side. So with with this Dragon Knight, we used to see. Well, we'll, we'll watch this back. Yeah, sad moment from Alreen. Try to get in on top of them. Maybe he's going in to like roll and kick away the Muerta. Think he's yeah, tanky I think enough. So. I think so. I, maybe he didn't want to roll that far. <laughs> he just wanted to get close enough to use the kick. But perfectly caught himself. You you were developing on something. Dragon. Knight? Yeah. So Dr Dragon. Oh, actually, I a dive mid. Sorry. That's good familiar use there. Two stuns land on crit. Malreen rolls through the trees, forcing WS back at least. Falcon's a heavy, heavy rotation to defend that mid lane. But yeah, I was wondering about the Dragonite because we, we saw this kind of transition to the armlet build where he kind of builds up slowly and surely, gets into this right click carry style with is the red dragon. I was going to ask, does he go Hand of Midas? And it looks like he's going the complete opposite direction here. Brace a null blink. I'm actually concerned about this build. This build screams that they need to make a lot happen right when he gets it. And Skeeter has been a pretty sex sacrificial carry a lot of times. A sexy carry as well. Yeah, a sexy carry is what I uh, <laughs> meant to say. But this means that he can't ramp up his farm. And they don't have like that backup carry. Like, do you might guess if he starts getting farmed? Malarine trapped in the cogs. Cuckoo trying to make a great escape, but dead shot it back into the calling and another roll from Malareen. And that's Falcons a kill. So they're keeping themselves in this with pick pickoffs here and there. These are important kills for them as well. If Crit can get closer to this uh, Rod of Atos, that would be a very nice timing to play around once he gets that. and keep catching these uh, heroes that rely on mobility quite a bit, like the Bat Rider, the Clockwork, and just turn set up on them. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. TP's into everybody. <laughs> oh, well, hello there. Oh, it's a doom. Getting pushed around by the cogs. Trapped inside the cage, Amar is standing and fighting and dying. Getting picked off by Cuckoo's little move there, right into the face of them while Crit is being burnt to a crisp. Nice what dead shot to stop the hook shot. Don't think wow. I've ever seen that before, but cool interaction. And Joe Camp with the familiars will finish him off. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It didn't even look like it stunned at all uh, onto the Murta because of the timing. Because he only stuns with his body, right? Not the hook. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be. Interesting. Yeah, that looked wild. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I've seen him get disjointed out of a hookshot before. You can, you can do it, but I haven't seen it that early on. Let's see. I guess Amada, Amada is understanding that his fate was death. Yeah, do we get to see it? Right there again. That's cool. <laughs> hey, he doesn't get stunned, right? He just kept moving. I just kept going, yeah. Smooth. Meanwhile, we have seen Talon invade a little bit here and take away the enemy ancients after winning that fight. Yeah, building up this 3k lead. Batrider and Visage still having a, a great time, but Visage has been rolled on now. Magnetized by Malreen. Torrent straight on top of him as they dispatch with Cuckoo, who tried to backstab in behind Falcons, and this Magnetize and Doom is very annoying as the Kunker tries to make his escape. Jokem getting kicked away, and Malreen saved up by the life drain. Kunker clockwork the two casualties so far, and the Bat Rider might be joining them in a second. The Breathe Fire keeping tabs on the Bat, and Malreen oh. kicking a wild wing forward nearly has alive? him. Just a little touch of damage, all they need. A mild breeze would bring Jokem to his knees. The Scorched Earth and the drums going to work for Amar to find the Bat, finally, at long last. And Jokam almost making his way out of that. The Tranquil Boots repaired themselves and he kept running as much as he could. Finally runs into the doom around the corner. Not what you want to see, but a good bite back here from Team Falcon, who otherwise were falling behind a little bit. Game is still very even. Only 1k gold lead for Team Talon. Yeah, dead close. 
Akashi are looking for that Manda style after the Mask of Madness. Can farm the Ancients and stack the large camp. Well, it looks like Cuckoo broke the smoke. Hook shots the Pugna, but it's the Makoto Kunka who's being gone on. Early Blade Mail pop. They lose the clock. Good torrent into Lasso as well. Maureen, decrept, roll, not going to get him any distance. Good block there by the Bat Rider. Yeah, that was nice playing. They're chasing for more. SF's coming in. The Dragon Knight jumps straight back in. Stops them in their tracks to kill the Bat Rider now. And Falcon's still holding this line. Link Dagger working out for Skeeter so far. He can keep getting involved in these fights and get something to happen, then it can work. But if the game is passive, then he's going to fall behind to the SF. And Shadow Phoenix are very quickly. Yeah, a lot of these fights are going to be spread multiple ways. The amount of initiation tools we've got from both sides means a number of heroes can all get got on and stunned. A lot of disables. Yeah, it's a difficult game even for a hero like Earth Spirit with some of the best mobility in the game. He can still get caught in so many ways here. Lasso or X Mark can trap him quickly. That's why we see him queuing up the BKB as his second item after a blade mill. Snakey's being eyed up with a tasty morsel in that bottom lane. Self decrep, not going to save you here. WS and Cuckoo. How many, kill how many kills has Cuckoo got actually? Because I feel like he's been borrowing a fair amount of them. He only took three so far, you know. Only? The, the Visage has been uh, Ooh. getting five so far. Akashi, dead up a top lane. Without needing to use Doom as well, that's a huge take. Yeah, no Doom, no no Dragon Knight. Just three of them on his head. that there were that many people up on the top lane. Normally this area is pretty safe to farm when you have taken the tier one tower, but Team Falcon just go for that SF. This is some kind of old school stuff now from Skitter as well. Blink into Mage Slayer. Let's see if he can weasel himself out of this danger though as Makoto drags him back into the boat. Good cogs from Cuckoo, snaking and Skitter trapped inside with a firefly over the top of them and the familiar is landing. Talon cruising Doom through this fight, visage. but Skitter, can he get away? Still staying alive as the Visage is doomed on the right hand side. A focal point for Falcons to bring him down while the Dragon Knight, he, he, he doesn't get found. He actually TPs away next to the tree, allowing Akashi to come back in, though, with Maureen finishing off the Batrider. Akashi doesn't really want to get involved. He's afraid. Cuckoo's gone in deep. Makoto says, no thanks. You can try as, as, as best you want. You can get that kill, but I'm out of here. Still an amazing fight for Team Falcons here. Even losing their uh, Mert at the very end of this. Prime target by Amar, rushes in, gets the Visage. So much of the damage is missing when the SF was just respawning and the Visage gets to Who's going to deal the continuous damage throughout this fight? Kunke can deal a little bit with his combo, but after that, he kind of falls off. Especially if no one's hitting him. They just ignore the Kunke, say, nope, your Blade Mail's not going to do anything here. But in these fights, starting to feel the, the two supports and Talon, this bat and clockwork, kind of an old school Dota combo in its own right, where we used to see the three bat and the four clock just trap people in cogs and put firefly on them. The amount of damage pre-BKB is pretty insane. That's yeah, a very nice thing that they have going for them. They did a good job with defensive uh, use of it as well, though. The Murta used the cogs as a place to put the calling down, so they couldn't stay on top of the Pugna. A little bit of uh, defensive utilization. Still dead even. And I'm honestly very impressed with Skitter's recovery. I, 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 again, he's come from just such a devastating position. I mean, through the actions of his team, of course, we've seen Amar and Malreen do a lot to run forward and get some action started. But we're still in a dead even game where Skitter got crushed. Yeah, Skidor also pulled himself into the game because he's been involved blinking onto these targets. Now rushing ah. towards mid. Double ulties onto Malreen. Triple ulties onto Malreen. And down he goes. Even with a stun on the Kunka, not going to be able to save him there. We see all of them grouping up towards the enemy ancients. Talon again want to get this high priority farming area. Without even needing your Shadow Fiend. Two supports is just... setting up a potential catch over on the Batrider if he goes up a Jokam. Might realize what's going on. He's still going to get rooted and the calling on him. Dead shot to push him closer to snaking here. 
And Joe Camp dead to right. Oh, missed opportunity. Didn't decrypt him with the mortality going. They could have used value. Still, <laughs> easy kill for them there. Two supports getting stuff done. Maybe the call was from Skitter. Leave it for me. Because he was on his way. The dragon out was close. <laughs> yeah, he, he wants gold for sure. Working towards that mage slayer. Where's Cuckoo going? Oh, he's gone in on crit. Hook shot on cogs and then walk it, walk it back. Makoto thinking about an X mark torrent. Not throwing the boat. Looks like that's still on cooldown for a second. Yeah, they have the defensive four staff now as well. Four staff on crit allows them to get out of these cogs to break the chain initiation. Really important item in this game. And this visage is still a pretty massive threat. Bongo boots in a pipe make him very tanky and difficult to contend with. The Falcons will reclaim their ancients, get a D ward there. Yeah, it's such a strong, but right now they're spreading pretty thin on the side of Talon. SF just shoving top with two Manta style illusions, not gonna get caught this time. Do you see him with a ward? It's too far to catch. So is, is this a case of Shadowfiend not feeling comfortable or knowing that he will feel way more comfortable with the next item? I think he just wants to wants to get more items going, yeah. Manta and Mask of Madness are both kind of farming items. So he wants to get something more before he gets big involved. Smoke into smoke, break into break, crit gets jumped, but the calling's down and the Batrider couldn't get the catch on him. Makoto's in though with the hook shot and the combo onto Skitter. There's Dragon Knight, he's invis, trying to hide away through the glimmer, and the cogs, well, they've trapped crit inside, but Skitter's able to fly away to the right-hand side as Makoto turns with his blade mail now dissipating. Malreen's able to open up a bit of damage. On the left, look at the Shadow Fiend, he's been caught and doomed by Amar. Skitter has jumped over to the left to finish off Akashi, while Makoto's slain by the Doom. Now the Visage is in trouble, and the Falcons, absolutely supreme control of that team fright from left to right. Again, we see the value of this Pugna, the defensive Pugna coming out from snaking. You can see why Team Falcons has been picking this hero over and over. Did such a good job keeping Murta alive. Her ulti also protected her against the SF right clicking her. And then they just dance in and out to the fight really beautifully. It looked like Talon might get the initiation they wanted uh, once they get the, the catch there with a the hookshot, but it just doesn't work that way. Like, first it's the bat who gets dragon-tailed and then the calling on his head. Skitter's able to slip away thanks to the glimmer cape, I guess from snaking. Yeah, glimmer capes, heals, they just keep everyone alive. And look at the Amar. <laughs> Where's just, where's the SF? Where's the SF? Where's the SF? Where's the SF? Finds him, dooms him, gets Skitter involved. And it all and falls to pieces the from there. the just can't really keep up with everyone else dying. He wishes the bat rider stayed alive a little bit longer, or that he had more teammates around. Such may be tanky, but if you just ignore him, kill him last. Didn't do that much in that that, that fight. Is, is the Shadow Blade going going to help that much? Because it feels like now we need a Lincolns, we need a Hurricane Pike, we need a BKB. Shadow Fiend all of a sudden feels a few items behind where he wants to be. I think you primarily need this BKB at some point. Like, look at the lineup you're fighting into the Earth Spirit, Murta, Hagna as well. A simple Hagna can just annoy you a lot with the Crepify spam. Like, first time, yeah, you can Manta style it, but what are you gonna do when it keeps clicking it on you? Oh my god, Muerta Shard, what does that do? <laughs> Muerta Shard is very funny. It's permanent scaling, so every time that you get a kill with your ulti active, even before you have the shard, you get 2% more spell amp for the rest of the game if you have the shard. Cool. So it's retroactive. retroactive. Yeah, it's retroactive. So any kill, he, we can see he was involved in two kills where he had ulti going while they died. And then you get 30% spell lifesteal during your ulti. Very That's nice. It. Very bad for uh, support Merita, but he does have 4% spell amp uh, right now. And that's not just during ulti, that's like all the time. Cool. That's why I'm a fan of if you play Merita, just, you know, anytime you're killing something, pop the ulti and get that spell amp scale up. The hidden stacks. Yeah. And then it's a surprise mechanic. Once you get the shard, you get to think, how many do I get? Is it 10? <laughs> Is it 12? Do I get a play. full Kaya Sanj upgrade? You play a little mini game with yourself. This, this Doom build is pretty fun, actually. Amar has, you know, forgone a lot of the you know, regular items on Doom. <laughs> the, the, the Midas, the Blink, the Pipe, etc. Phase, Drums, BKB, Sanjin Yasha. It's the run at you, Doom. 
Yeah, he wants to chase people down, but it, it is fun. But is it as fun as the Parasma Doom? Where is Miero's Parasma? Oh, you're right. That. Well, Cuckoo trying to have a bit of fun with Crit here. Unfortunately, can't quite land the torrent in time. And Amar not even going to flinch. Holds his BKB through the X mark. A talent. I mean, they're, they're poking at this, but Falcons, I think they're ready to strike back while the, the iron is hot. There's a 5v5 facing off around the Roche pit with a, a minute to go until it turns night time. Yeah, pop the Dragon Knight ulti as well. They want to look for a fight. Going around and below. You can see Talon are a little bit scared to take this fight. Last few fights have been difficult. Makoto can clear the wave. Oh, Cuckoo. Hey, he's been found. Clockwork. And one of the familiars. Oh, they're trying to get seconds. away this time. Malrin's in. The Shiver's Guard and the roll onto WS. The familiar is nearly just dying to it as he tries to roll, but good landing there from the Visage. While Amar Doom, look at how speedy he is. 500 move speed sprinting in towards you. A roll from Malrin and Atos from Crit catches the Visage. Hit pretty hard here as the Batrider, who got doomed up, will try and firefly back to safety. But there is no respite from Falcons here when they are hungry so hungry and they also very quickly transition into more they get the pick off on the clockwork and all of talon were very quick to say okay let's not lose more heroes this time that's what happened last fight we lost batrider and then we couldn't take the team fight so they tried to run away but you see that speed coming in like you mentioned doom just rushing people down the shivas from the earth spirit to keep uh keep them slowed and nearby and visage is not the fastest hero he has bongo boots yes but after that he kind of crawls do they have more reveal for the SF? Akashi, thankfully, finds out they don't. Yeah, he's gonna stay safe since the illusions to push a bit. Meanwhile, oh, top, the top. Akunk is getting gone on. Malreen and Crit here on top of Makoto. And the Batrider trying to back him up as the Kunker BKBs and boats into him. And Skitter hook shot it now as well as they do drag them where to into the Requiem. But that's Akashi spending his ultimate, getting a support kill. Thankfully saving the Kunker for now, but there's a potential turnaround from the rest of Falcons. Thinking about it. So interesting to watch Doom just running around like this. They think about catching him or trying to lock him down, but it is not easy. And the jump from Skitter. Initiation out of the Dragon Knight. I'm all holding the left-hand side. <laughs> look, look at them, they see the Doom, they hit him a few times. Oh, he's speedy and tanky. You need to get on Pugna, but how do you do it? These frontliners making it difficult. Snaking is just understanding his positioning and his job perfectly. Sits back and keeps everyone alive. Talon need like items on their Batrider. They need something more. He has Blink Four Staff. He almost needs like a Shadow Blade or Aghanim Scepter or something to be able to grab better initiations for his team. Or like a Trixus Cloak or something. Yeah. Like he's played lucky. a fantastic game so far. I think he's the standout player of Talon this far in, in the game, but he needs even more items to be able to deal with this. Oh, jeez. A craggy coat for the Earth Spirit now. Good luck killing him. Fantastic to kind of bunker down when the SF tries to kill you. So what is that? 2,500 HP, 40 armor. Amar 40 armor also has... It. Yeah, he's got 3,000 HP and 26 armor. Deary me. That's it's before he even targets. reaches the Assault Curass. Well, Boss Koo gets a Courier Snipe. Try to scout out the Roche Pit at the same time. And Jokam kills off the wave. I don't know, man. This, the Shadow Fiend's top of the net worth, but at, at no point in this game have I felt he's ready. Yeah, in a weird way, he didn't really find the momentum here. Uh, even though he had a good laning stage, actually... Talon did kind of dominate the laning stage with mid going so well, SF's lane being really strong, and then top lane, we saw what happened to Skeeter, uh, but they didn't manage to transition it into something more. And it's Team Falcon who actually just worked their way out of a sort of difficult laning stage. Hey, kind of going back to the old intro boys roots. Now Joe Cam looking over the Roche pit as Falcons bring him down to about half health. Smoking up as well. Always curious to think, what's the cons there? They, they're close to killing Roshan, but they've seen something or felt something. That means they want to make the jump onto the Visage. Cuckoo trying to save his buddy. 
The hook shot and the death of the clockwork while they still find WS here. Feared up. He'll turn into a gargoyle. But as soon as he emerges from his stony shell, he's getting rolled upon and sent back down to hell. No way to stay alive. They didn't have enough heroes there to try and contest. They still have Batrider. He's thinking about a sneaky attempt on this, but this is very difficult. He doesn't have clockwork to provide the vision with the rocket flare anymore, so he has to kind of wing it for when he goes in and steals this. Good luck, Joe Cam. Yeah, good luck. Flame break. Flame break. Oh, Blink that's it. early. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, nah. Almost. He blinked in very early after a flame break. It was a nice attempt. He tried. Drastic times call for drastic measures. I, I respect it. You gotta respect people who go for the attempt. Worst that can happen is that you fail. That's like asking someone out, right? That's what he did. He asked worst out thing that can happen is they say no. <laughs> they just said no. <laughs> Full rejection. We'll see what the talent boys can do. They lose. That's it, two top, and probably gonna lose the one mid soon as well. Akashi trying to cut waves and shove out top, but uh, yeah, you gotta attack with your illusions. Looking for a grab here, Amar. Pretty far forward, has the SMY though. Shot onto the Bat Rider, so <laughs> connect onto the right targets. <laughs> He's so fast. He's so large. Fast, large, tanky. He's going for an AC next, so that plate mill adding a lot of armor. And even if you do get a grab on him, he has the Vindicator Sacks, so he will get 20 extra armor during that as well. Did we decide on whether or not he's a bird or a moth? What, what, oh. He looks like some kind of... Like a moth oh. with the wings torn up. Yeah, yeah, like a sad moth. He gets half a bird point, sure. Half a bird point. <laughs> he's an insect pretending to be a bird. He's bird food. So, oh, you know, crit. you are what eats you. I think Crit has found WS here with a rod of Atos. Uh, the rest of the team not near enough by. Yeah, the rest of the team dealing with Cuckoo down in that bottom jungle. And Amara looks like he got torrented on his way forward, so they couldn't quite catch up to the Visage, thanks through Makoto's efforts. Yeah. Is it just going to walk into Vision soon here over on the Observer Ward, but they have eyes for top lane instead. Joke Cam, can you get away? Oh, I Stole's don't know if you can. He's even magnetized him, man. The cool guys don't look at explosions. He just turns around, knows that the bat's dead, and walks away. Uh, that's just brutal. The damage coming in from Earth Spirit when he pops the magnetize. He basically gets a DD rune when he magnetizes with this facet, so the smacks are doing a lot of damage. Hello, Torrent. Oh my. Skitter, man. You're too that, good. That was an attempted moment right there. If they got the SF ulti on the Skeeter. I was ready to scream. Yeah. Even so though, he has, he has that Aegis and BKB still, so... You gotta go through a lot of things here. We'll try on Amar. Again, he's just running at them. He's not even running away. You can't even x torrent him, he's too fast. <laughs> I'm going for their own Tormentor now. This map is starting to get very dark and desolate for Talon. Top lane spooky, mid lane is full of dire heroes, bot lane is dead. Another attempt onto the Earth Spirit from Makoto, but uh, this 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 Kunker was a cool idea. It did very well in lane, but hasn't really had the, the impact you desire alongside the Shadow Fiend. I completely agree. They they have not been able to find the team fights that they want. Uh, Talon just. You know, the, the Kunkka was an idea to take uh, 5v5 fights, have some advantage there. And with the strong Visage they had early on, I thought they might be able to do it. Falcon, however, just broke That's... apart those first few fights and I think completely took away the courage from Talon. Now they're just sitting back, barely able to get on the map. We've seen the Satanic Daedalus Tidehunter. We've seen the Refresher First Item Mars. And now we're seeing the Sanjin Yasha Assault Curass Skadi Doom. Perhaps. Amar is a pioneer, an inventor. Yeah. He also <laughs> did the, the Basher, uh, Basher Underlord build. He, oh, yeah? Uh, he likes doing a lot of creative builds. Very cool. Especially games where he gets, gets a little bit of an advantage going in the game that he likes to go full out on these interesting builds. 
Is it for the slow so he can be faster than, <laughs> faster than everyone? Yeah, yeah, it's all the movement speed oh, difference. Um, I mean, he actually oh. clicks so hard. This crit wolf that he has as well, 20% chance for 250% damage. Has changed his mind to satanic now. Yeah, he's becoming the right clicker. Ah, yes. Very lore-friendly item for Doom. <laughs> I was just wondering, you know, he, he dooms one, then he Scardy hits another. <laughs> it's like, no healing. No, no healing. At this stage, the Doom is uh, sooner to get his Tannic than this. Yeah, that's pain. I mean, Amar does have to BKB quite early on. Yeah, and then absolutely leg it out of there. No way to catch him. So they get something at least. Cute little four staff play, forcing him into the cogs. Cuckoo making some some uh, advantage for himself. A smoke out from Talon. They He's are... Behind with Batrider. Looking crit. for a grab here. And he does get X-Torrented and Requiemed. Ah, that's some expenditure to kill off a position for Muerta. But she, she's dead for a minute, so a bit of room here for Talon. She's dead for a while, but meanwhile, this move from Falcon, they're taking over the top part of the map. Wisdom Rune is spawning. They're going to steal away the Radiant Wisdom Rune. When you're on the back foot like this, you really want those runes. Support levels are starting to hurt a bit. Two level 14 supports versus a level 18 and a level 17 support. And all of town moving towards top. Trying to take over some area, but they have moved straight past the ward, so... Team Falcon, they know about this. I'm They're just dodging, backing up. Am I crazy? I, I feel like WS has had... Boots of Bearing Pipe for, like, 15 minutes. Oh, yes. Yeah, his net worth has been basically sh shattered. He bought Shard, so... There, there's okay, that. he did get something. Shard was uh, the additional, and he bought the recipe for uh, AC, which is not that cheap. Right. He's got little bits of bobs here and there. Yeah, but he has not made a real progression for quite a while now. This was a visage that looked phenomenal in the early game. Got the first blood with the death toll extra gold. He got tons of kills in laning stage, but he did not manage to transition into taking over the game. Well, it's a case of kind of scattering and scrambling to push out waves as Falcons respawn on Crit Muerta. Just under a minute until Roshan fast spawn. Yeah, we're hitting this point now. With Doom and Dragon Knight, they're up at the top of the net worth, just behind the Shadow Fiend. And the oh. SF is big and all, but this is also what, uh, what we were talking about between the games, that Falcon and Talon, Team Falcon are so good at getting gold on everybody. I do not understand how Skeeter pulled his uh, his game back to being now number one net worth in the game after that start. That is honestly impressive. Without like an acceleration item, right? He yeah. went, bra was it brace, treads, brace and null, blink, <laughs> mage slayer. <laughs> no, he went, yeah, the blink, blink first and then mage slayer, yeah. Crazy, uh, crazy good. Uh, read on the game and where he could find those jumps with the blink dagger. That blink, I could have seen it just be a dead item as well. Buy blink and then look for some fights, don't find them. It could be extremely sad, but every move he made, he kept finding these ganks. I just like super primal instinct to know what he needed. Yeah, they, they're great at reading the map. And now with Crit. the wards they have as well, this ward on mid lane is giving good information on Mikoto, transferring to wards top. And Crit is pretty stacked as well. Blink Force, Shadow Blade, Atos on your support. Now I was saying like, oh, it's just a kill on a support murder, but she's pretty freaking farmed. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's queuing up a BKB and is, he has the better part of it. He needs 1500 gold and he has BKB completed as well. So he's getting ready to transition into that carry Murta style as well. Talon. They hookshot Amar. Let's see if they can do some more. With the lasso and the torrent there, they've caught him before he got his BKB off, but now he's running and sprinting away with the BKB going, but he's still gonna get taken down. That was close, actually. That was really close to him getting away, but SF does bring a lot of damage, has that Daedalus. Can kind of chop through the full uh, Assault Cuirass and Eye of Scotty. That's a huge kill for them, and now... Moving over, trying to contest this Roche. 
It's gonna spawn in 30 seconds. That's so massive for Talon. I mean, Amora's been playing a fantastic game, but that one pick off here could give them a way back into the game. How, how much money was it? Uh, 2,000? Something like that. I can't see the text, the the text isn't. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see it now. <laughs> so it, it's 2,000 gold for the kill alone. And then, of course, getting a lot by taking over the map as well. There's still 15,000 yeah. gold behind. But if they can get Roche now, Clockwork is going to scout that it respawns. I could give Talon a chance. Cuckoo sees it, calls the rest of his team, rally around Bosku. Time to take down the big man in the pit. And Falcon's nowhere near this. A glimmer of hope for the Talon boys. Yeah, it really is. Mask Commander's goes to the backpack for Esther because he wants to take that Aegis into his inventory. I feel a little bit happier. Still a banner as well. Cuckoo will get that before backing out. Falcon's still hunting for someone who comes down to Farmer's bottom lane. Oh, they're just jumping him. They're going Sticks straight around. on the Shadow Fiend, aren't they? Oh, didn't get the grab on him. It's amazing yeah. still, though, how scared Talon are, though. Like, they go out, they get a kill, they get Aegis, now they run back to their base. Yeah, they have everything and they have Aegis, but still they recognize that they're pretty far behind, and so they are. 17,000 gold lead right now. Full and I need this kind coming of, out from Murta. I think it's kind of perfect confluence of events where they force early BKBs out of Falcons, then go for the second round, round of fighting. They are still so reliant on magic damage as Talon. They need a way to pop these BKBs early. And maybe with a jump with like a this, the two man lassoed up into the Shadow Fiend. Doom, he's going to break free and get out. They lose snaking for a minute though. Good pick off. Maybe they can look for something more. Meanwhile, they still have smoke on a lot of heroes. No bad try to lasso, but they're moving towards top. All they need is a good hook shot. A little bit of vision. They see Malreen, but Malreen is faking with these illusions. He sent an illusion away from the wave to pretend that the real one was running. Now he's charging down at mid lane again. Oh, sorry, top lane. While the rest of Talon are down the mid lane. Yeah, Talon just moving for a tower. Still 30 seconds on the Pugna. Want to get something done during this time. Jokam went top. And he's trying to scout out to see who was there, but he's got to return to the rest of his squad. They need every piece of the puzzle here to fight into Falcons. So Skeeter on his Dragonite the... has overwhelming blink and level 25 timing. His Dragon's Blood, HP and uh, extra region and uh, armor now. Looking really, really huge. Where is the Silver Edge on the Shadow Fiend? Yeah. That's just, do, do you have enough firepower to kill him in the duration of a break and a stun before he can BKB and run? That's the question. Especially with all the other distraction heroes or saves coming in. He just two minutes on SF. Wants to push bottom, but you can see Falcons want to take the fight. And they scan up to that Tormentor. They know what's up. Amar just shows, clears the wave. Talon, come at us. Let's see what you're made of. Akashi back into that Invis with two minutes left on the Aegis. And they'd love to find something a little bit more than just positioning. The rocket flare X gives pushing. the vision for the two-man lasso again. And Jokam drabs the doom in, but the hog shot misses. Point blank whiff. And now in comes the Dragon Knight. Destroys WS Visage and Talon on the run. Tail between legs, scared and hiding. They turn with a Requiem, but the BKBs are up for Falcons. They have taken out Jokam. He dodges the Dragon Tail with a Manta nicely done by Akashi. But Malrin and Skitter are still on his tail. Amar can keep giving chase onto Makoto. Aegis down. And what an absolute disaster for Talon. The Shadow Fiend's going to get pummeled a second time. And the Falcons chasing onto the Kunker now as well. Crit is here with his BKB up, slaying Makoto with the help of Skitter. I, I, I don't know if the hook shot 
hitting would have made a, a massive difference, but it definitely didn't help. He was spotted too. They're not even done. They're going to oh chase God, for him, you're kick right. him back to the team. Yeah, you turn yourself to stone. I turn you to stone. Let's see who wins. It's going <laughs> to be Maureen. Hey, you want to be a gargoyle? You can be my gargoyle. I'll put you over here by my dragon knights. Oops, you broke. Man, the catch on two heroes with Batrider was nice, but you don't have the follow-up immediately there. Their wind-up of their follow-up spells is really hurting them. It takes a long time before Esa Volti comes out or the Torrent combo coming in. It's not immediate. And against that Sanchin Yasha giving status resistance, Doom just walked away again. Lassoing him is not that easy. I'm sure Cuckoo's kicking himself. Hook shot right in between everybody. Yeah. Missing quite a few targets there. And Falcon's just gonna come in and breeze through the base. And it's not just mid and top, but there's uh, Amara's going to work on, uh, on the top lane as well as the, the mid and bottom lane, isn't he? Yeah, the Satanic Doom is pushing top. Satanic Skelly Doom. <laughs> <laughs> this is the normal like build. Chaos Knight item build or something. Yeah, he's he's absolutely enormous. I don't think they have any chance to turn this game around. They're going to try and hook onto the first grid. Wait, Mallory has 4,000 health. BKB Refresher. So has multiple ways to get out. Skitter actually wants to go in with Mallory and the Dragon Knight, taking out Cuckoo. Buyback's available. I see if they can punch back outside their fountain because Jokam's slain and Amar diving <laughs> into the base. Satanic life stealing up with a life drain going. Amar, the okay. fountain farmer, decrept and stays alive until he finally dies. GG called in the end and Falcons putting the little birdies in their place. And that, is, that is just an extremely one-sided game. It may have been 45 minutes.